All right, guys, whether you like it or not, South Carolina's playoff hopes and chances are picking up steam and picking up steam fast. We're going to talk about it. Lockdown Gamecock starts right now. You are Locked On Gamecocks, your daily podcast on the South Carolina Gamecocks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, guys? Welcome into Locked On Gamecocks. I'm your host, Chris Marler. Hope everyone's having a fantastic Monday, if that's even possible. And we got a good show for you. It's going to be a quick show. I know I always say that and then I get long-winded, but I promise today will not be that. Um, and we're going to talk about something we talked about last week, but we'll get to that in a second. I just want to start by saying thank you to everyone who has made Locked On Gamecocks your first listen each and every day. Shout out to our everydayers. Remember, we are a free and available podcast wherever you get your podcast network or wherever you get your podcast, as well as on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, uh, today's episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. You guys have heard me talk a lot about them. And we still have some NFL action tonight. We have some college basketball action starting. There's a lot of good stuff you could be betting on and you should be doing with our friends at FanDuel. And for a limited time only, new members, if you sign up and make a $5 bet, you get $150 in bonus bets for free. So head to FanDuel.com to sign up for that today. And let's get into the show here, guys. All right, the sun is shining brighter than it's had in like days here. So um, pardon me for being in this light. I think I'm like a, a cherub right now in heaven. Anyway, I brought this up a week ago. And some of you flat out told me I was crazy or stupid or something. And you're not wrong because uh, I'm not the smartest man. But I brought it up, the fact that there's a path to the playoff. There's a path to the playoff. And that sounds weird. And I know that a lot of Gamecock fans are like me. They're very superstitious. And that makes you uncomfortable. But here's the thing. <laughs> you can run from it, away from it, around it, whatever. The talk, about it's in a, it, the talk about it is inevitable because it's picking up steam more and more, like on basically a daily basis at this point. Um, ESPN has come out with their latest projections and ESPN's all state playoff predictor numbers. Listen, ESPN's FPI stuff is makes no sense to me. It's, it's kind of dumb at times. Um, their rankings with FPI are very confusing. They don't make a lot of sense. Here's the thing though, that entire spectacle and presentation of the college football playoff and the rankings and the, and the shows leading up to it, that is all done on ESPN. So every time they talk about a team and a resume, they're putting side-by-sides and comparing and contrasting, whatever, those are all numbers that ESPN is using that are from their own database. So that's why it's important. And their numbers are the ones that are telling you, yeah, there's a chance. <laughs> there's a chance for South Carolina to get into the playoff. Now, I don't know what kind of chaos would have to happen. I've seen Brad Crawford talk on it, a few other people talk about it. We're not going to get into all the ins and outs. Well, actually, we probably won't say it, but – the main thing you have to do, one, is just win out, right? I think that's everyone's focus anyway. you got three games left. you got Mizzou, who you're a 14-point favorite over, which is insane. 14-point favorite. Then you get Wofford. You're not losing to Wofford. And then you get Clemson on the road. Right now, I think on ESPN FBI, you are a 43% chance to win that game, which is way up from what it was earlier in the offseason. But they have the 38th-ranked strength of schedule remaining – in the year. Remember when I talked about this a couple weeks ago? And, and people blast me on this on Instagram and social media for posting this graphic. But I put out this graphic of like, okay, here are here's the current strength of schedule rankings from ESPN FBI. And then I had another uh, graphic that was like, here's the remaining strength of schedule. This is before the AM game, right? So Carolina was on a bye the week I made it. They had five games left, four of them were ranked at the time. And I kept telling you guys, I was like, it just feels like that ESPN has ranked this because in their eyes and their metrics, they view South Carolina's percentage the chances of winning those games to be pretty good. And if that's the case, then like that would make sense why you would see four out of five games left featuring a ranked opponent. And, and look how it started to unfold already. <laughs> like, I mean, they've won the first two games handily. Um, you know, like this team has really, really turned a corner and I don't want to get ahead of our skis and I don't want to jinx or anything like that by any means, but I do want to get into some of the numbers so you guys understand that it's not just me saying stuff to say stuff. 
I mean, I'll do that, but it won't be until later in the episode, I'm sure. Um, all right, let me pull up Brad Crawford's Twitter here. That's something I should have done beforehand, but I'm not professional. Um, and in the meantime, while I'm pulling that up, I want to also tell you, so like these are the metrics that they go off of for ESPN. It's it's like their FPI ranking, um, strength of record, right? Um, strength of schedule. And then they have this other metric called game control. And I almost didn't even look at it because it, it's basically just like how how well you control the outcome of a game from start to finish and by not allowing chaotic things to happen or bad mistakes or whatever. Think about what I just said and think about some of the, the, the games you have watched as a South Carolina fan over the years and even this season early on. And then I'm going to tell you the number here in a second. I told you the ranking chance of schedule is 38. Defensive efficiency is ranked fourth in the country. The overall FPI ranking is all the way up to uh, 16. So you're right on the outside looking in of the 12 team playoff. Strength of record is 17. Okay. Strength of schedule is eighth. They're six and three with the eighth toughest strength of schedule in the country. Their game control, and this is big for people in that room. I don't fully understand it. I don't always agree with it because a win's a win's a win. But the people in that room that are the, you know, the 12, 13 people, whatever, the committee that are making all these decisions for us, they will tell you flat out, yeah, game control, the way they're winning games matters. And South Carolina's game control is ranked seventh in the country. Seventh. Um, to put that in perspective, I'm going to tell you the last five years what their strength, their game control uh, rank has been nationally and in the SEC. 2020, it was 97th, which was 13th in the SEC. 2021, they were 75th, which was 12th in the SEC. That's Beamer's first year. 2022, they were 34th, which was 8th best in the SEC that year. 2023, they were 49th in the country, which was 10th best in the SEC that year. In 2024, they are seventh in the country in game control right now. Seventh. That is fourth best in the SEC. It is only behind Alabama, Texas, and Ole Miss. Got to say, guys, uh, the numbers <laughs> like look and sound pretty good. It doesn't mean that they are going to go to the playoff just because of that. It doesn't mean that they're going to win the playoff because of that. What it does mean is that whether you even agree with the FPI numbers, because I don't always, but whether you want to buy into it or not, if, if you want to start thinking about it, like the numbers that the people in that room are going to be looking over and using for their, their research and their arguments and all that kind of stuff, South Carolina looks damn good in all of them, in all of them. Um, all right. I feel pretty damn good today. This shirt, I, this shirt hasn't fit in like two years and, it's, and it fits now. So um, that's either here nor there. We are going to take a quick break and then get back to talking more about some more stuff in the Vandy game and looking ahead this week to Mizzou as well, what South Carolina will have to do if they want to win that game and keep things rolling. In the meantime, before we go to break, I do want to tell you again about our friends at FanDuel. Um, cannot say enough good things about them. And if you have not already done so, I don't know why you would have waited, but if you have not already done so, go sign up, new users. If you make a $5 bet, you will get $150 in free bonus bets. That's $150 in free bonus bets just for making a $5 bet and winning that $5 bet. Go to our friends at FanDuel.com. Um, it is America's number one sports book. And here's the other thing too, guys. If you are like me and you are trying to make a bet and you are overthinking everything, but especially your gambling prowess, then FanDuel has got everything you could possibly need in one place for your gambling needs. You show up, they have live play-by-play, -play, they have up-to-the-minute stats. Um, all the information you could possibly want to make the best bet possible is right at your fingertips. Go to FanDuel.com, America's number one sportsbook, and the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, we'll be right back, guys. Locked on Gamecocks continues next.
All right, we are back. Uh, Locked on Gamecocks continues. The sun has gotten significantly worse. It hasn't been out in South Carolina in like a week. And now it is just all of the light. Um, but we're not going to complain about nice weather and, and what it's doing to the backdrop here. It's insane. Um, anyway, if you are listening instead of watching, good for you. You chose a good day to do that. Uh, before the break, I brought this up. Brad Crawford does phenomenal work at 247 Sports. Big South Carolina fan. Great, great person in general. Um, he tweeted this out earlier. And it, so this is this is the scenario or one of the scenarios that needs to play out and what you need to cheer for um, for South Carolina to potentially backdoor their way into the playoff. And like I said, listen, you have, you have a 14% chance right now from ESPN and FBI. That's the 20th best odds in the country. Now, that's – let me pull this up real quick because it's not it's not completely – like like the, the odds are ranked by um, – it's 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 not based off of what the rankings are like right now. So like Boise State's odds are I think like the ninth best, but they're ranked eleventh. So it's not saying that South Carolina is ranked twentieth best or they have the twentieth best uh, team in the country or wh- whatever. What it's saying is out of all the teams they have ahead of them, and there's several on here that are surprising. Um, South Carolina still ranks behind them. It's good and bad news. I've also just talked myself into a circle. I'm not even sure if I just made a point, but here we are. Happy Monday. All right, so here's here are the uh, the teams and their percentage rankings or odds to get into the playoff. Oregon, Indiana, Ohio State at the top three. <laughs> Oregon, Indiana, Ohio State at the top three. All above 92%. Texas is at 82. Penn State's at 81. Bama's at 76. Tennessee's at 74. Georgia at 73. So your top eight teams are all from two conferences, four and four. Now, a lot of people think you're going to get four from the SEC, four from the uh, the Big Ten. I'm not so firm on that, but we will see. Um, it, like, Listen, because I just named off all those, all those teams. I didn't even mention Ole Miss, who seems like they're guaranteed to get in there now uh, after their win against Georgia. But after Georgia, you have Boise State, Notre Dame, Ole Miss. Miami's at 60 because Miami can still get in if they win out. Um, after that, BYU, who's still undefeated, by the way. Um, SMU, who has a path because they now with Miami's loss, they can get to the playoff, I guess, um, if they went out. Colorado, who's in if they went out. That would be an incredible story. Army, Clemson, Kansas State, Texas A&M ahead of South Carolina and then South Carolina. Now, here's the path laid out by our buddy uh, Brad Crawford. Okay. For South Carolina fans rooting for college football playoff chaos, here's what you want to happen. Win out, so you need to beat Mizzou, Wofford, and Clemson. Clemson goes on to win the ACC. Tigers need to beat, to beat Pitt and hope Miami loses to Wake or Syracuse to have a shot. Texas A&M wins the SEC outright. That would be the third thing you would need. Aggies clinch an SEC championship berth with wins over Auburn and Texas. Pretty crazy. BYU wins the Big 12 as an unbeaten, okay? that And the reason you need them unbeaten is because you don't want two Big 12 teams getting in to the same playoff. Notre Dame wins out and gets a bid. Boise State wins out gets through a five bid. Indiana loses to Ohio State and Purdue. Georgia loses to Tennessee. Ole Miss loses to Florida, Mississippi State. Now we've gone off the rails. LSU loses to Florida, Vandy, or Oklahoma. In this scenario, four at-large Playoff spots left out for the committee to fill uh, with the following: Tennessee eleven and two, SMU eleven and two, Colorado ten and three. If they lose the Big Twelve, and then you have Texas, Miami, Bama, Georgia, South Carolina, LSU, and Ole Miss. South Carolina would be the only team with wins over two Power Four conference champions. But as you can see, the head-to-head losses versus LSU, Ole Miss, Bama really sting. You guys, I'm gonna be I'm just a thousand percent transparent with you. I wish that we didn't do that segment because now it seems way more far-fetched than I thought. <laughs> so it seems not that doable. Um, but crazier things have happened, uh, you know, but it's also very confusing. There's just so much. So shout out to Brad for being able to even put that together. Mm. Crazy, crazy times. All right. So um, if you don't go to the playoff, what are the uh, the ball projections as of right now? 
Um, across the board, most most people, most places have South Carolina going to the Rely Quest Bowl in Tampa. Um, and if they make it to Tampa, they will pro- they'll be facing a Big Ten team. Um, and the Big Ten team, I think, slotted in the, the Rely Quest Bowl of most projections is Iowa or Illinois. Um, not going to lie, it, not super pumped about that matchup. Um, I think Iowa fans and South Carolina fans would get along. Like Iowa fans are actually pretty cool, um, but but like not just not super pumped. I I really I would love for South Carolina obviously a nine and three, but I would love to see them paired up against a Nebraska, paired up with like a Michigan or somebody that is a a former blue blood or a current blue blood um, logo helmet type game because I think that would be really good for the program just to continue the the wave. Of momentum that's happening um but who knows who knows we will see uh all right we've talked about every possible angle that south carolina would have to have to get to the playoff um anyway so let's go back and talk a little bit uh more about the stuff at vandy and and some of the stuff that uh that it means and just just some more positives we talked a lot a lot about the positives yesterday um, not a ton to clean up. Really not a ton. Listen, I'm not going to single out anybody and, and, and try to, you know, kick anyone while they're down. It, and I don't mean this in a bad way. This team is not competing for championships right now, right? Um, this team is not going to Atlanta. Uh, and despite all the time we spent on the playoff thing, they they probably aren't this year going to the playoff. But here's the thing, guys. Like, at some point, you are going to have a game come down to a field goal. And I don't mean like in the LSU game where it's like you lined up to a field goal to tie it. I'm talking about, it, like, to go win a game. Or you saw it like with Vandy. Like, or if you, you, you know, make some mistakes early because you're not focused and you do something, you miss a kick, whatever. If that comes back to bite you in, in the end, it, it, there's – I've always thought that the the beamer ball, like like the kicking accuracy part of a beamer ball, is probably like the least affected part by the 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 schemes and the you know mentality and and just like the overall concept of of what he wants to do on special teams. Like I don't associate that with with a kicker missing field goals. I will say everything on this team is peaking right now, everything except for that. So it'd be great to get that shipped up or shaped up this weekend before Missouri comes to town. Um, there you go. Dogs say hello. Just never going to have a normal show, are we? Just never have a normal show. Um, let's talk about Missouri real quick. And if you have followed along, because like you, were, if you were surprised like I was um, at the fourteen point line, goodness. Okay. If you watch the Missouri game against Oklahoma, and I don't know why you would have, because it was not very fun um, for at least three quarters of it. Then it had the drunkest ending you could imagine at the end of it. Um, so in this 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 game, Missouri, they've been without Brady Cook for a couple weeks now. They were out without him for most of the Bama game. They got shut out. The line moved, I think, like six points in favor of Oklahoma by, by kickoff because Drew Pine was the quarterback. Drew Pine – and Jackson Arnold were both very bad for most of this game. Here's what you're going to get with, with Mizzou. They have elite receivers. Like this, this, like I was excited for this on paper before the season started because the Mizzou receivers who are so good um, going up against South Carolina secondary was a really, really fun matchup. Like a really fun matchup. Um, if you've watched Missouri this year, and I, and I kept saying this in the preseason, I, I, I am a fan of Mizzou. I'm a fan of Eli Drinkwitz. Like, one of my best friends from St. Louis who used to go to games there a lot. Like, I, I like their fans. I, I like their program. And they're putting investments into the program, which is important. And they get crapped on from fans all the time for not being geographically close. But, I mean, like, whatever. Here's the thing about Mizzou going into this season. Having them in the top ten was never – smart at any point of the season because if you just take a step back and look at what they were actually able to do in the 
large sample size of the Eli Drinkwitz's tenure there. You had recently they had uh, what do you call it? They, go, they win eleven games and they they go to a or they go to the New Year Six Bowl last year. Um, you know they were close. They they barely lost to Georgia two years in a row, which I think has given them a ton of street cred with with AP vo- voters and stuff. Um, but here's the deal: they had a losing record in in the three seasons prior, four seasons prior, every year that Eli Drinkwitz was there. I think it was four seasons. Like they, they've had a losing record every year he was there before last year. It's awesome they won eleven games. They're only a two loss team now. Eli Drinkwitz said this weekend he thinks. That was a huge win against Oklahoma because it kept their their playoff hopes alive. I can't even imagine the the thing Brad Crawford had to write for their playoff hopes because it can't be very easy. Um, having South Carolina be a fourteen point favorite over Missouri, knowing that Missouri is coached in a similar way to to South Carolina in terms of they allow outside noise to come in as motivation, they constantly have a chip on their shoulder. And that will never go away. Eli Drinkwitz, he he has always has always had a chip on his shoulder. And anytime he can he can be petty about something, he will. And it's fun and funny and all that kind of stuff. But but make no mistake about it, the 14 point uh spread that Missouri is finding themselves as underdogs in, because I don't think he's ever lost to to South Carolina. Um, that's a big deal. Right? Am I wrong about that? Um that's going to be a big deal. It's going to be hard on all, uh, all week at practice. And they have dudes. Like, like let's not let's not kid ourselves. They have dudes. Luther Burden will be a top 10 pick. Theo Weiss is a, is a really good number two receiver. Big body, good, big frame. Made an incredible catch this weekend against Oklahoma. You know, the offensive line has been beat up, but they've got really good players. That, you know, Caden Green has been banged up a little bit. Um, there's players on this defense that are going to play the next level and that are going to create some frustrations for, for South Carolina. But here's the thing I keep coming back to. If Brady Cook's not there, what are we doing? Like, I, like I don't know what happened to Drew Pine, and he did have three touchdowns you know, against Oklahoma at the end of the game. You're talking about the first half. It was like 5 of 11 for 23 yards. There's no explosive plays on field, and that's the thing that you're going to see. That, like, if, if As long as South Carolina can continue to take that away, this game will never be in question. It'll never be in question. Like – they, they, that was such a staple for them, I think, at times. I don't they weren't great at it last year, but they have really tried to make that their identity on offense, which is hitting deep balls. Brady Cook throwing the ball deep a lot. Um, you saw it especially early on in the season when they probably could have been developing a run game and like instead of taking these deep shots and kind of forcing that into the playbook, um, to no avail. So, Drew Pine, if he is the starter, guys, we're you know, we're heading out at halftime. Like it's, it's, it is that kind of game, but nonetheless, they will be fired up. They did just beat Oklahoma um, in crazy fashion. So they have athletes. I'm not saying completely overlook them, but let's, it's also a situation where let's, let's address and, and, and talk about ourselves in a positive light because where the South Carolina team is right now, you are like way above where Mizzou is way above start acting like it, right? Like, like continue on, like be the program that you, you, you want to be and just kind of continue turning that corner. And I think they will. And, and I tell you what, this one, I don't know what we're going to talk about during Wofford week, but this one, and then Clemson, Ooh, buddy, we got a, a, Good, good end of the year coming up. All right, I think that's going to be the end of the show, to be honest. Um, I'm tired. It's Monday. The dog's been barking. Crazy day. Um, I appreciate you guys joining us regardless, and I hope you guys have had a lot of fun as well. Send us any questions you have uh, that you want answered for the show, any deep dives. We've got a couple coming this week as well. Um, Before we go, I do want to give a a quick shout-out. You know what? We'll do one more segment. We'll be right back. All right, uh, let's close up today's show with one more stat that I wanted to go over and 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 uh, 
notice. I still only have notice um, at the last four games versus the first four. All right. Before we do that, I want to give a shout out to our friends at Game Time App. You guys have heard me talk about them before. There's no one better in the ticket industry than Game Time App. Download the app today. Sign up. Use the code Locked On, uh, and you get twenty dollars off your first purchase. Use the code Locked On. Uh, Locked On College. I'm sorry. Locked On College. You get twenty dollars off your first purchase. They have everything you could possibly need to make a good investment and decision in your ticket buying needs. So all you will do, go download the app, go sign up. And then once you use the promo code locked on, you get $20 off your first uh, ticket purchase. What you'll do then is you'll be able to access all the great things in this app, like upfront pricing. So there's no surprise 